Hello everyone, it's Jodie here with a, another furniture painting tutorial for you guys. I hope you're all well. Um, today I have this amazing um, Victorian chest of drawers uh, and I did a very, very smoky look with them and a very dramatic look. So I want to show you guys how to get that look today. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So I have this really big chest of drawers behind me. Um, these are Victorian. They're a tiny little bit worse for wear. There's some, definitely some history to them. And there's definitely some nicks and, you know, unevenness in the wood and things. And I'm totally fine with that. I like that. I think it adds to the character. So what I have in mind for this today is a bit of a, another artsy makeover. It's maybe a little bit moody because I always think of the um, Victorian times having a bit of a moody look to it. Um, so yes, so I'm going to start today with some caviar, S hang on, there we go, can we see, there we go. So to put the caviar on I'm going to use a mini brush, that has definitely seen better days. <laughs> But um, I just want some nice, I don't want crazy brush strokes, I just want to get a nice kind of base layer on there um, and then we'll just take it from there. Okay, so as I'm going in with the caviar, I am very lightly misting a little bit of water. I am not misting a lot at all because I want some really good coverage. I often like to put a base colour on and have it as a foundation that I can build other colours on top. And a black foundation, like a dark canvas, can be really good. A really great color to start with because any colors that you put on top then will look extremely vibrant so I am not using so much water that it is really thin in the paint I am literally just using the water just to get the paint moving a little bit I am also making sure that the paint is fully in the grain so I am using different directions um, so yeah so this base is just about getting the um, color ready so that I can build additional colors on top all of the products today are also listed below, so if you get a little bit lost, don't worry, as always, they're in the description below. Also, if you're in the States, if you're in the US, you can also purchase your Dixie Belle supplies uh, through the links below. You can also find a local retailer um, if you're in the US, uh, the UK, Europe, and also Australia. All right, so I've got the caviar on, um, that's dry now. So I'm gonna come in with the second layer. So what I've decided for the second layer is to do a bit of a smoky blend. Um, I've picked three colors. I haven't practiced beforehand, so I don't know if they're going to work, but we're gonna try and again, just see how it goes. So the first three colors that I've picked up today are coffee bean, which is this very dark brown. Plum Crazy, which is a lovely, lovely deep pink. And last but not least, we've got some pink champagne, which is almost a white. So we've got, this is a shading color, this is the main color, and this is going to be the highlighter. This, so I've got the Best Bang brush here, which is a natural, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go, can we see that? There we go. So I've got the Best Dang brush here, which is a natural fiber and synthetic brush, and it's absolutely fantastic for blending, especially if you want that smoky look. And then I've just got a few synthetic brushes. It doesn't really matter which, these are probably the best, uh, the oval mediums for the kind of look that I'm doing, but I don't have a lot of them, so I'm not too worried. I'm just I'm just going to use these brushes to get the paint on, um, and then this is going to be what I call my neutral brush, and it's going to be my main blending brush. I'm not going to put any paint on this one. I'm just going to use this to blend everything in at the end. So I'll show you what I'm going to do now. You'll also need a water, some water for this as well. All right, so I'm going to start by misting my furniture. I'm just lightly misting it. I don't want to be saturated to the point that it's dripping. I'm then grabbing my Plum Crazy and just one of the synthetic brushes and I'm just roughly applying this sort of everywhere on the bottom drawer. I am going to be working in sections for this. Um, I am then bringing in some coffee bean around those edges and then I'm getting my Best Dang um, brush and just giving it a pat. 
at this point I'm just trying to figure out what's working and you know I'm just trying to decide which way I want to go with this when I do a look like this when I do a really smoky look I like to work in sections um, rather than going all in because then you've you kind of work into a time limit if you feel like the paint is starting to pull then don't worry just use a little bit of water and it will reactivate the paint so obviously I have roughly put the coffee bean on the outer edges um, I'm putting a little bit in there now to change to make the blum crazy a little bit darker so I'm going for this really smoky look where it's really dark and dramatic around the outer edges and then lighter in the middle um, just to yeah it'll just create depth and dimension so I obviously want the darker colours to be more prevalent around the edges so there's going to be more coffee bean around the edges than Plum Crazy but at the moment I'm just kind of blending the two colours together so I'm patting my Bestang brush which is my neutral brush um, and just creating lots of texture and also um, just making sure that some of the um, coffee bean and Plum Crazy are kind of blending with each other while also not being overly blended the way to get the smokiness is to make sure that you uh, keep some of the brush strokes in. I'm also now bringing some of the pink champagne into this, um, which is my, it's almost like a white, but it's still got a pink tinge to it. So it's still going to be warm enough for these colors. Um, it's a similar tone and it's not going to completely look, you know, washed out on this piece. Um, and doing the same process again, I'm just putting the coffee bean on the outer edges and putting the plum crazy, um, in the middle there and then yeah and then right in the middle so right in the middle of the piece um, that is where the pink champagne is going and I'm just working in sections again and I'm just tapping you know uh, just to blend that the best dang brush is absolutely amazing for blending what I did decide actually in the end as well is I had what I would call two neutral brushes um, so I had one brush to blend the coffee bean and the plum crazy and then I had a separate brush to blend the plum crazy and the pink champagne and the reason why I did this was because I found that by using the same brush I was bringing in far too much coffee bean into the middle area which I wanted highlighted and it was just muddying it up far too much so I decided to keep um, the brushes separate. All right, so I really want to get this middle section highlighted now. So I'm coming in with the Plum Crazy. I just want to mention as well that each, so not to confuse you, but each color had its own brush and then had a Best Dang brush for the Coffee Bean and the Plum Crazy and then another Best Dang brush for the Pink Champagne and the Plum Crazy. So I have just put lots of Pink Champagne in the middle there and I am just using my brushes now to blend that out a little bit. And I'm bringing some of the Coffee Bean into the middle because obviously I just want, I don't want it to look like boom there's coffee bean, boom there's plum crazy and then boom there's pink champagne. Sorry for all the booms. <laughs> um, I wanted, I still wanted a very soft blend. I wanted the transitions in the blending to look smooth and, and not like, um, and not harsh in any way. So I did bring some of the colours into, you know, some of the coffee bean into the pink champagne um, but mostly the, pink, the coffee bean stayed on the outside just to create that kind of vignette look and that depth. So I find this look as well absolutely perfect for beginners because you're not relying on any kind of smooth blend. Um, you can, you know, the brush strokes are still apparent, but obviously they don't look like brush strokes. It just looks very smoky. Um, it just looks like it was once painted in a really nice, bright, purple, elegant purple color. And then it's just started, you know, with the white in the middle or the pink champagne in the middle, that looks like it's been sun bleached a little bit. The coffee bean looks like it might have aged around the side and some of the colors are fading in some areas. So it just creates this very vibrant, this very elegant, um, but also aged look as well.
All right, so I really like what we've got going on here. I want to tone down the purple just a little bit. Um, the lights aren't helping right now. That's what's making it look so bright. And also, um, I'm gonna come in with some black glaze. And this is just going to darken it up a little bit and make it look a little bit smokier. So the dark glaze actually looks blue when you get it in the pot, but I promise you that it isn't. I promise you that it's not going to stay blue. Um, I don't know why it's blue to start with. It must just be something to do with the dye. Um, but as it starts to dry, it starts to get really, really black. I'm just going to use a really cheap sponge. You don't need anything special. My friend Jeanette from McKay Designs taught me to use these. Um, to get this really soft kind of glazed look. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can follow her at McKay Designs on Instagram if anybody's interested. She hasn't got a YouTube, but look at her work, it's absolutely stunning. So I'm just going to use circular movements with my sponge and it's going to just create this really smoky look. It does look super blue there. I promise you it doesn't dry that way. It does dry black. And I did end up putting two layers of this on and I used circular movements just because that would help me then um, continue this smoky look that I'm aiming for here. All right, so I've got some would you bend now. And these are wooden appliques that when you heat up, they actually bend and they're going to add some extra character to my piece. It's just started raining outside as well, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I'm going to get my hair dry and this is just what I've got. If you've got a heat gun, that's even better. Um, gosh, it's so loud, I'm so sorry. It's because I'm in a big warehouse. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna heat this up now and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to use them. All right, so you want to put your heat gun or your hair dryer on a really hot setting to get this bend in and just put that heat on it all over it. And then once you feel it's hot, then you can see it will actually bend, which is amazing, especially like on a piece like this, it has a very soft sort of curve to it. Um, and also, you know, you can put it around corners and things like that. They're very easy to use. It's also recommended to use a really good um, wood glue for this. I'm using tight bond because it dries really quickly um, and it also when it dries it doesn't dry like in a really awful way. It dries really nice um, and I'm just going to kind of put this as a vocal point in my piece here. I'm just trying to decide which way I want it. You do have a little bit of time um, and then once you've applied your applique, your would you bend to your piece of furniture and you're happy with the way it's positioned then it's a good idea just to put your heat gun or hair dryer on it again um, and then just get it bending not only does that help the glue dry but it also helps um, sort of keep that bend and, and help it bend around the furniture as well you can build with your bends up um, as much as you like as well like oh god I can't remember how many there are but there are literally hundreds and hundreds to choose from I believe um, so you know you can just build them up to however you like them um, you can have as few as as little as you want or as many as you want um, and every time that you put them to together it creates a brand new unique style I think um, and I absolutely love them and you can either paint them before you put them on the piece of furniture but more often than not I, uh, I like to paint them once are on there because then it gives me kind of inspiration as to what I actually want to do with them. All right, so this is one of the uh, corner appliques that I applied um, and I will list all them below as well, all of the woody bends that I did use for this piece. Um, and I'm just going back to my original three colours. So that is Plum Crazy, um, Coffee Bean and also a little bit of Pink Champagne and I am applying those with artist brushes. Again, each um, applique having its own individual paintbrush um, and I'm just getting into all of the details of the um, would you bend here um, and I just think doesn't coffee bean and plum crazy just make such a gorgeous purple this was such a happy surprise for me I never realized that it was going to make this purple and I'm just so happy with it all right, so you don't have to actually get the perfect blend here as well because um, I will be coming in with a little bit of gilding wax. It probably, um, in, on this one occasion, it would have probably been easier for me to paint the woody bends before I actually put them on the furniture because I'm having to be really, really careful here not to like blend loads of colours out. Um, also, the 
it looks a little bit crazy there with the it looks like there's loads of brush strokes and stuff on the furniture um i think the black glaze is still kind of curing a little bit there at the moment so just ignore that i promise you it doesn't it doesn't look like that once i've finished <laughs> So just like I did before, the Plum Crazy is mostly going in the middle um, and then the Coffee Bean is mainly going around the edges um, just to create that little bit of depth. And then I do come in with a little bit of pink champagne just in the middle there. Um, and then I also have a neutral brush, so that's a brush with no paint on it, just to kind of blend it all out a little bit as well. Uh, this is, so you can see the uh, pink champagne just being added a little bit here, and that just gives it a little bit more of a oldie wildy faded grandeur style, um, and it just makes the middle look a little bit bleached and a little bit faded. Okay, and now that the applique and the paint is all dry, I'm coming in with, this is a very uh, scratchy natural bristled brush. Um, and I'm also going to be coming in with some gold gilding wax and I'm just going to apply a dusting of this over the top. The reason why I am using a scratchy natural bristle brush, this is just a cheap one, um, is just because it means it won't be too perfect. Um, it's going to uh, leave little gaps and speckles and things as I apply this. So some of that purple is going to peek through underneath still. Um, and this is just going to create, again, it's just going to create a very kind of oldie worldy look. Um, it's going to look like it's been gilded at some point and some of that gold has started to speckle off and fade, um, showing some of the paintwork underneath. I just want to point out as well that the gilding waxes are royal based so there is no need to seal this part of the piece um, that the, because they are oil based and they have a built-in sealer um, they will cure um, and they just give this really perfect kind of reflection as well. All right, so I also went in with some black gilding wax um, and I just did a little bit of shading on this just to make it look, again, just to add that age to it. Uh, the black wax will um, just age this. So this is black gilding wax and not the um, not the water-based black wax from the Best Dang Wax range. Um, the reason why I'm just using gilding wax is because um, obviously we've got the oil-based gold on there so I'm not sure that a water-based wax would sit on top so um, the gilding wax is obviously oil based so I've come in with some black gilding wax because then I can I will have peace of mind and know that um, the black gilding wax will set and cure on top of the gold where I wouldn't have that same peace of mind with a water-based dark wax if that makes sense. Okay, so we're at the stage now where I'm just kind of just adding little bits and these are just tiny little embellishments that are going to make like a massive impact on the overall finish. Um, so what I have here is some Dixie Belle Gold Digger and just another natural bristled brush. I still wanted to give this um, a little bit of a grungy element because obviously it's already very smoky, it's already very moody. So I thought, okay, how can I add to this sort of age and mood a little bit more? So I applied my gold digger all around the keyhole there, just kind of dragging it down a little bit just to get this drippy effect. Um, and then using my water mister, I just let that drip and that just created again, this very nice sort of feel, oldie worldy feel and faded grandeur and opulence. All right, so this is now finished almost. I'm really excited. I think this is looking really pretty. Um, I've decided not to go and add any flowers because I think it's looking dramatic enough as it is. And if I add the flowers, then it may not keep the moody vibe that's going on here. So I'm kind of happy with the way it is. Um, and today I've actually decided, normally I like to use wax, but today I've decided to go with the top coat. So I've decided to go with the Dixie Belle Satin Top Coat and this will just help continue this very soft shine which i'm actually re normally i like matte finishes but i'm really enjoying the shine on this piece so I'm, I'm going to seal this with a top coat today and i'm using a synthetic brush you see there we go and the reason why i'm using this is synthetic brushes tend to remove any brush strokes uh, it will help me put the satin coat on much smoother and the reason why I'm using a flat medium instead of a mini is because I just want to get into all these grooves and I think this would just be a lot easier. The gilding wax does not need to be sealed, but I'm gonna go over it anyway because there are little bits of paint in between there that does need to be sealed. 
When applying your um, silk clear coat, not your silk clear coat, sorry, your satin clear coat, uh, just make sure you try and use long brush strokes as much as you can. Um, they're very easy to use though actually, and they're pretty self-leveling, so, um, so yeah, so don't worry about brush strokes so much with these ones because I just find them very easy to use. It does give a little bit of a blue tinge as you know when you first put it on there, but again, just kind of similarly to the glaze, uh, that blue tinge will disappear and it will just dry with a lovely sheen to it. Um, I will actually go in and I will apply two coats of this uh, just to make sure that the piece is fully sealed. Um, and I always like to use Gator Hide, which is a more of a tougher and durable top coat. I always like to use that on the top of a piece. And just in case you're interested as well, um, I also put gold gilding waxes on the pulls um, and I also shaded those with some black gilding wax as well just to make them look really, really old. But I'm absolutely loving this piece. I think so far, I just think it's, I don't know, I just love how moody it is. Is. I just love the depth of the purple. Um, this was a little bit of a nappy accident um, because I wasn't expecting it to quite turn out this way. Um, I did want to originally paint some, paint some flowers and things with it but as I said earlier um, it was just looking so dramatic and so good as it was that I just decided to go with it um, and just enjoy the process and just enjoy what I was doing so you know it's a big thing for me guys I always tell you guys the same just make sure you know there is a lot of things associated with painting such as social media and sales and all of that malarkey um, but I think the main thing is just to remember to enjoy it um, painting is supposed to be fun and therapeutic so whatever you're doing just remember to have fun with it And voila, here's the finished look. It was an absolute joy working on this piece, not only because it was in a Victorian set of drawers and it was just an amazing piece anyway, but smoky blends are one of my favorites to do. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, um, whether or not you have already done smoky blends in the past or if you're thinking about recreating this look in the future. As always guys, look after yourselves and happy painting, bye bye.